Sort of disappear. It's hard. I used to like seeing the orange. I can still see some. All right, Mr. Calvin, we are going to make a bead. Okay, let's see if it let's let's see if it sticks on there. Gotta get that a little bit orange. It is so hot in Hawaii. Do you notice how hot it is? Like when you're with with the flame on? No. No, I like it a little warm back here, especially in the winter time. Got you centered. Okay, this is just the base. I'm gonna add a little darker color here and there and put some dag on there. How long have you been making beads now? Oh, close to 30 years. I should know how to do it by now. But, uh, sometimes it depends on a lot of things. Right now I'm on a roll for, for these kind of flowers. But we have somebody from Mobile, Alabama watching. Her name's Emily. Mm -hmm. But this is a little thin strip of dichroic. Not all of it works real good, but if you buy enough of it, you'll, you'll have some good stuff. And so, so I'm going to stick a little bit of this on there just for background. Oop. Got a little wonky there. That's okay. Are you going to make a sparkle bead? Yeah, you put a little bit in the background, you know, this is just background stuff, you know. Calvin, where did you grow up? Huh? Where did you grow up? Uh, mostly California. In uh, Northern California. Hmm. Is that where you thought about getting into glass the first time? Uh, yeah. Yeah. There's something so mesmerizing about watching glass melt. Yeah. First time I did it, it was, it was like a epiphany. Almost as good as when I learned how to cut glass. Do you like um, stained glass better or the well, same? Well, yes, but it takes a lot of space. So, mm. unless you're doing small stuff. Uh, of course, if you want to put some artwork in it, you might want to make something a little bit bigger than... than the sun catcher. This one's going to have a little bit of a light background. Usually I try to make them a little darker. This is just so... This extra little clear on there is just to help keep the dichroic from coming out from the bottom. It likes to likes to sneak out. Sometimes it comes out on the ends of the beads a little bit. It's not too bad if it shines real nice. Is this the core of one of your flower beads that you put the dichro and then you did the leaves? Yes, yes. And then you layer. Is. Oh, cool, cool, cool. Yeah. Okay. I have some of these at the store. I think I'm going to do a giveaway then with, with one of them. a bunch of them down there. So. Oh, I'm going to show that in the camera so that everybody knows what it's going to happen. Yeah. So I'm going to, so this, hi, hi, this is what Calvin is making right now. So you get to see the secret of how these are made. So right now the core of this bead is dichroic. And now I'm putting on some double helix reactive glass. What is reactive glass? Well, uh, sometimes it has a lot of silver in it, and the silver comes to the surface and kind of shines and gives it a little. I like to call it like a. I like to call it a opalescent look. Why is it smoking? Why is there oh. smoke coming off of no, that I glass? burnt a little piece of paper down on the, oh. on the bench. <laughs> uh, a short little piece of glass was hot. So 
So the reactive glass is what fumes with the propane part then? Mm, well, you know, it's, uh, watch. It makes it shine. Oh, it makes it silvery. That's cool. So that you hit it with that before uh, you encase it? Yeah. And I don't encase the whole thing, so some of the shiny stuff will appear around the covered up part. Oops. What happens if you don't put in a propane flame before you encase it? I, I don't, I'm not sure. I, you know, I just like to make it shine more, so I usually uh, reduce the flame, reduce the oxygen, but that's a good question. <laughs> Calvin Eileen says, love watching this. I'm also glad to see the glass strands all over the place and not in a neat container. Well, it's traditional. It's traditional. The, the, best, <laughs> look, the best beaters the, uh, bench looks like this. The best. I have pictures of them. <laughs> uh, do you guys want to see the rest of his bench? I can quickly scan his bead making setup. Let me know if you guys want to see. Yeah, this light makes the uh, makes the uh, the colors look a lot brighter too. So it sort of has a little bit of an opal look. The dichroic kind of changes a little color when it goes through it, and so it's a little bit translucent. Just gives it a another depth to it. These beads are mostly making the background stand out more than the, than the flower, really. Okay, so I'm gonna lift it up slowly. And they wanna see your workbench area. So I'm gonna pull back a little. So Calvin's been making beads for our store for 25 years now. And this is 25 years of bead making his tools he makes a lot of his own tools too his tv in case the bead takes long his glass rods this is well organized i have to say your glass rods more tools because he is a tool fanatic do you use every single tool that you have here? At least once. Hi, Debbie. <laughs> at least once. Look at these rods. They're so Easter-y. Can you make some Easter flower beads? All flowers are Easter beads. <laughs> what did you do that for? I raked uh, the leaves. Oh. Put some leaves on there. And you kind of just then flattened it back out. A little bit, yeah. I don't want to trap too many air bubbles in there. A little bit's okay. How many beads do you think you've made in the last 25 years? Oh, I don't know. At least two a day. Okay, so that would be huh. 25. Oh, I, got, I can't use my calculator. Let's see if I can do the mental math. 25 years times two beads a day. That's and this is the way I encase. Seven. It's Punch. actually kind of sideways compared to how most people in case. So Thank you. Times ten years. You made like twenty thousand plus beads. I mean, with my bad math. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's very possible. It's yeah. very possible. Yeah. It's uh beads are I love stained glass, but you can finish a bead in a day. You can't always finish a stained glass in a day. So, For sure. So this is sort of like a little bit of sort of medication or meditation. Yeah, medication. Yeah. Uh, it is medication and meditation. Yeah, yeah. Because you kind of have to be in the moment, but you don't want to drift off too far because you are playing with fire. For anyone who is out there with us, thumbs up if you love beads. Thumbs up if you've always wanted to make glass beads. It'd be cool, Calvin. Uh -huh. What if like we get technology to the point where 
there's like a camera on you and then people just tell you what colors they want. Mm. As then, you make then, it. Then it won't work too good. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, some of these colors you can't change. Mm. You know, and I, I've been experimenting with every color there is on these flowers. And I come up with some pretty ugly looking ones. But once in a while you come up with something that looks halfway the way you want it to. <clears throat> There's just some colors that they don't make that you want, like a magenta. Uh, just, they get close to it, but the one magenta doesn't work the way it's supposed to. Tabby right back. I'm going to go look for one of your aquarium beads to see if okay. I can show it on camera. Okay. Should I keep talking? You can. I think we have some friends still watching, about 15 of them. Okay, but... Um, is there any aquarium bees cruising? So actually, this is the boring part. If you're doing it the right way, it should be boring because most of the time you're waiting for your your cover glass to melt down smooth. Mommy is looking around for an aquarium bead, but during the boring part, I'll, I'll show them some super cool beads. Now, anyone who's watching, give us some input. Do you guys like flower beads? Do you like dotty beads do you like um earthy beads i'm just picking stuff up that's just on his workbench right now gosh knows when he made it sometime in the last 20 years let me see if i can steal the camera should we make this pink oh lavender these are his aquarium beads lavender you guys want us to do a video of his aquarium beads comment and let us know we can come back and do this so the aquarium bees have no fiori inside he makes it look like there's sand then there's like uh, kelp creatures oh thanks mama and here's more my mom just brought another stick out <laughs> Pam, she goes, hi, Jamie. Hi, Calvin. I want to buy an aquarium bead. <laughs> you know what, Pam? Why don't we do an aquarium bead show? And then that way you can see them all. And then um, if there's a color scheme you like, I wonder if I can ask Calvin to make it as the demo. Like more with oranges, some with more purples. Calvin loves purple. <laughs> can, can you tell? In fact, that should be the, the giveaway question. What color flower bead has Calvin made more of than anything by the thousands? <laughs> Do you think it's more fun, Calvin, because... Pam says her favorite color is purple, Calvin. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's more fun because you get to do it for fun? Yeah, of course. Uh, I, that's why that's why when when people get into can you do this color or that color well maybe yeah. <laughs> it's just like people used to ask me at the flash shop what color should I make this and I know that's that's up to you oh that's right Calvin used to work at the glass shop called Sundance, Sundance in mountain view california so if there's any lamp workers out there and you ever got your supplies around 20 years ago plus it might have been calvin who filled your order because evidently he was the one who filled some of my orders when i was ordering before i even met calvin <laughs> what a small fun world and and you made your beads here too yeah that's so right true, here. right here. So Calvin put on five dots, and the five dots are the five petals of the flowers. Uh, and they're pink. Pink. Yeah, like. Hydra made. Yeah. 
Uh, Do you ever make like seven petal flowers? No, but I've made double petal flowers. Oh, I like double petal yeah. flowers. <clears throat> so at this point, you've put down a base layer, then you put sparkling dichroic on top of it, mm -hmm. then you encased that, right? No, and then you plunge it. Oh, then he plunged it, yeah. and then what happened after that? I know you did some and leaves. And then you encase it. And then leaves on top of the encasing? Hmm? And then leaves were after the encasing? Oh, no, the leaves are already in there. Okay. Is this like layer four? Now this is layer five? Uh, no, three, I think. Three? My goodness. So this part, he's putting on some sparkly... Dichroic. Dichroic on top of the dots. Uh, that's why your petals have glittery in them. So one of the things in case you've never made beads before is you can't let the bead get cold. So you kind of have to be fast when you're making a bead. You see how he puts it back into the heat right now? So that's like... um. I guess you could call it massaging it with the flame to make sure that everything is staying warm. If any of the bead part gets cold along the way, that's the part that's gonna crack, shatter, or just be weak. So gotta keep that whole thing hot, but not so hot where it starts to melt and yeah. sag. Yeah, or, and sometimes if you let it get too cool and you try to heat it up too fast, it'll crack. So, yeah, if you left it get cooled off, you have to heat it up slow. Right so, around the flame. all of his dots <laughs> right now are, it's almost like playing the trombone. Hmm? There's like, because when I learned to play the trombone, there's not a certain place where you have a note. You have to just know where to throw your arm out to mm -hmm. and then hit the right, you know, yeah. note. So interesting. I love making beads. All right, so now he's heating it up, marvering it. That's what that's called when you kind of like put it on that, what is that metal part called? Because uh, it's made out of... Oh, this is graphite. Graphite, so that the bead doesn't stick. And he's layering up the petals because once the petals all get to the size and layer of thickness of glass, he's going to melt it down one more time. And when it becomes molten, the bead, he's going to put... What are you going to put inside? A pokey piece of glass or a no. metal piece? Uh, no, I'm going to plunge it with the, with the tungsten. Okay, so he's going to take tungsten. Is tungsten like graphite? No, it's a, it's a hard, hard metal. Uh, it takes a, a lot more heat to melt it than most metal. Ah, so that's why like you can 5, make... 5,000 degrees. Gee. Oh, maybe. So make that area molten. You can see when it's molten because it's going to turn orange. So the yeah. hotter it is, the more orange it's going to get. When that area is orange, watch because he's going to push that into the flower yeah, it's hard and to that, see where the middle of the flower is and that's going to create a hole and in that hole there is now a place for an air bubble to be and that air bubble is what creates the center of the flower i'm going to take this off yeah. and i'm going to come closer at a different angle okay mm -hmm. they can see Someone just said she took a glass bead making class and all her beads look like goofy donuts. I think we all made goofy donuts. I think that's the that's the beginner's first bead is a goofy donut. Oh yeah. Hello, Wendy. Uh -huh. All right, so we have the flower bead. So what Calvin is looking through so you guys can see is a magnifier that he made. Oh, check it out. This is cool, Calvin. Calvin's ducking that's, his head so that we, the best way, that's we the can best see. That's the best way to film it. They used to have a camera that could do that. Okay, so we're getting Calvin's head and the beads. I'll just come back to the side. You can relax now, Calvin. He's trying to make the bead with his head cocked off at a, a strange angle for us, but I will just show it to you. We'll go back here. So if you've never had a Calvin bead in your in your stash before, Calvin used to do the bead shows before. And as he got older, how old are you now? Uh, 57, uh, 75. <laughs> He's now doing it for fun, which is super cool. I'm gonna adjust this a little bit. And those are the best kind. 
John Lynn says she has 30 glass rods in her garage for at least 10 years. Would you consider those vintage now? <laughs> Probably, yeah, they could be. Some of the colors change. You know, what's really nice about glass beads is that they don't get old. They just get more valuable. So Calvin is now encasing the bead in clear, a clear rod. Very important that that clear rod be clean or you can get like You'll see dusty, streaky bits in the overlapping layer. Yeah, it's okay if it's not right on the flower. It's not too bad or a little smuts. But when it's right where somebody's going to be looking at it, then it kind of don't look right. When you add this layer of glass on, will it just heat up and spread evenly on its own? Eventually, yes, that's what we want. But Eventually, like a day or no, 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 10 no, minutes. No, I'm gonna, see, now I got a little bit of smudge right in that spot there, but that ain't going to be too bad. It's just on the side. So one thing you can do if you're really particular about like a little piece of schmutz in there is you can heat it up to molten, take some tweezers and pull it out. But if your tweezer has schmutz on there and you end up putting more schmutz on there, yeah. John Lynn says, if you send me your address, I will send them to you. <laughs> we can make a, a, a YouTube live with your glass rods. <laughs> That's so kind. It's so cool to see the flower happening. Now, if you guys have any questions, Calvin is alive and live so now's the best time to ask any questions about what he's doing i think it's real i'm really lucky because i love glass bead making and i have access to beads 24 7. my mom she makes beads too she makes like cute little fish okay i'm just gonna and reindeer that. reindeer monsters little cute little monsters i'll give mama some sake and be like mom get on the torch and so Calvin is changing the angle of the bead every so often, as you see. So when the piece is molten and you change the angle of the rod, you can get the glass to droop in different directions. So if one side doesn't have enough glass, you would heat it up and then let the glass droop and fall to where you want it to go. Eileen says, what's the hardest bead you've ever made? Oh, probably a big old hollow, hollow fish bead. <laughs> Hello, fish bead. Yeah. I wonder if I have one, one to of show. Those puffed up fish that I <gasps> Oh my God. I made, I made some giant ones. They, they wanted them even bigger. I couldn't make it. I made them as big as I could. And, uh, they wanted to put them on a cake or something. And oh, they were, they, they didn't look good to me, but they, they took them. <laughs> on a cake. Is what's your favorite bead to make? I don't know. I, I really like the aquarium, but they they do take a, a little longer to make. And uh, these are I, I really like these because it took me a long time to re remember how to make them because I got distracted and when I tried to make them again, it took me like ten years to get good at it again. <laughs> so. If you find something that you're good at, kind of keep doing it so you don't forget how to do it. Yeah. And thank God for YouTube, right? Because yeah. sometimes I make videos of um, a technique because, yeah. like, I know 10 years later, I'm like, what did I do? How did I problem solve that? Uh, they, they used to have a lot of, lot of, lot of video on, on this on YouTube, but I haven't found it as much anymore. I guess people are charging. Mm-mm, making them into classes. Yeah, now I don't do classes no more, but if anybody wants to watch me make a bead, I'm here. <laughs> so true. You know, I bought Calvin a setup. All he has to do is slap his iPhone on there and hit go. But I think he wants me to come over and press all the buttons. <laughs> so. Well, Max said he could do it. Oh my gosh, yeah, Max is six now, right? Yeah. Okay, we'll wait till he's eight. Wendy said, so true, skills get rusty if you don't practice. Everything's get rusty. Oh my God, my legs are rusty in the morning. 
So that's getting pretty close to round. And as long as it looks round, it's okay. <laughs> You're not going to play marbles with it. Eileen said, did you have to blow the hollow bead like you do in glass making? No, this is just... This is... You know when you did the hollow fishies? Oh, yeah. No, that that is just on a, a regular mandrel, and it's just leaving a bubble in the middle. So it's like making two donuts side by side. And merging them. Yep, and then making like a bridge of glass between Cut, the two, and, two and donuts. And in the air. You know what makes it hollow, Kelvin? Is it because the heat is like almost like a air, hot air balloon? It busts heat... up the air. So yeah. cool. All right, what you doing now? Just letting it cool off a little bit and we put it in the kiln. Okay, let's follow him. Here he goes. And there it is. It's going to bake. How long is it going to bake? Oh, the rest of the day. Yeah, it only needs to be in there for a half an hour. And you can turn it off. So cool. Can I do a giveaway with that bead? Sure. Yay. This is Calvin, everybody. My bead dad. <laughs> and this is the yard. And this is my mom's station right over here when she makes her beads, which they have now taken over with their stained glass projects, as you can see. So there's always something fun there's happening here. There. That's your mom made the dragon. Oh, and a little stained glass dragon that my mama made. Calvin has made some beautiful stained glass. I have some in my window at home. They say, thank you, Calvin. Thank you, thank you. All right, so I'm gonna take you for a last minute look at the studio where the magic happens and let me know if you guys want to see an aquarium bead and we can do that next time that, they said that so here calvin look all the comments come in uh -huh. over here and they can tell you like thank you debbie says that was interesting to watch and so that's how you can kind of um see who you're talking to the uh -huh. comments come uh -huh. up over here all right, thank you everybody. I will give you. Hey. And we can turn it around and me and Calvin can say. Bye. Ahoy ho! Ahoy ho!